the Australian Alps. Unlike many other mountain ranges, with their enormous rocky jagged tips formed by the collision of two continental plates that forced up the Earth's rocky mantle, the Australian Alps was lifted thousands of feet upward by the movement of magma when Gondwana began to break up somewhere in the vicinity of 130 to 160 million years ago. I'll get him next time. I'll get him next time, boys and girls. Gondwana was a supercontinent that formed roughly 550 million years ago and began to break up during the Jurassic. The difference in how the Australian Alps came to be is the reason for its sloping hills and high plains, occasional eruptions of basalt lava from small volcanoes over the last 90 million years has flowed down to fill the lower lying areas of these mountains, forming the flat, high plains that we see today. Just out here watching the genius at work. I actually spotted this scene and I was like, I'm, I'm gonna just set up here real quick, get this shot. And he just, I turn my back one second. Friendship over, isn't it? Oh. All right guys, I don't know where Scotty's off to, but I just wanted to show you what I've, um, what I've packed for my shelter tonight. Just a classic um, standard roof tile. Uh, <laughs> there's like, there's like 15 of these things just be better than the old kitty start, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Solid. <sighs> yeah, come out of the snow, he said. I'll take you, I'll take you to see some snow. <laughs> Carried them all way. Yeah, mate, there's snow all around us, just not here. Now he's having a rest. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I'm not a god, mate. <laughs> Can't make it snow everywhere, <laughs> mate. Look at this place, though. How could anybody complain about that? I mean, I still am, I was but I'm say just right there. <laughs> no, you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> You done now? Can we go? Or? Well, the avalanche territory, mate. <laughs> That's the way, mate. Keep going. <laughs> Just a couple more steps. We bought these things for a reason. <laughs> are we meant to put them on? I'm going to go slide oh, down here, anyway. Probably, I hey. think we're meant to put these on. I think we should on. definitely put these on. we got them for. We're bloody using them! <laughs> okay. You good? I guess so. That's how we do it. You first, mate. I'm a professional, mate. Look at that. To our impending death. Oh, I'm a, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mom <I'm> stuck. <laughs> That's how you get halfway downhill. This guy. <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> Mate, I was drifting down there. It's actually a bit steep, eh? Yeah. Sorry, this. Oh, mate. And that's that's how some boys and girls. Oh. I'm just going to investigate some tracks because as we came up, came up the hill from over there, I saw something which I thought was a hiker because it was tall and moving across the ridge. And then I was like, hang on, that's, that's not a human. I think it's an emu. 
It's an Amy. Look at these tracks. That's a dinosaur footprint. Look at that thing. Alright, that's enough uh, Amy spotting for now. We're gonna have lunch up in this tree line here and I've got a squish top pie, I can't wait. I can't believe that sun's out as well. There's actually quite a fair bit of um, blue sky. God, and yeah, the weather report wasn't very promising for today, so this is good. Have you got a quiche? Um, I ate the quiche, I've got a chicken pie over here. Oh, held up. Held up okay-ish. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a bit deformed, but... Oh, mate, I'll take it. Oh. What a day it's been already. It's good. So we're planning to be out here for two nights. So today's Friday. So it's tomorrow. I think tomorrow the weather's not, um, meant to be pretty decent, so that's good. There's a peak around here that we might try and climb up. It's like a big sort of rocky outcrop and stuff on top, so... Weather permitting, we'll do that tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He'll try, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> this is your first snow camp, eh? This is my first, first snow, snow trip. Camp. You yeah. saw an emu on your first snow camp. That's pretty good. An emu on top of a mountain oh, no. in the snow. In the beautiful valley, bloody hell. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to finish my lunch and get back to you guys in a bit. Thank you. What he just said to his camera. <laughs> At the moment we're just looking for the ideal place around here to set up camp. And we're pretty spoilt for choice. That's for sure. Just looking at Emu. Emu tracks again. We're just saying, look at the stride on this fella. <laughs> Bloody oh, hell. Pigeon. Look, Matt, Matt's his pigeon. One. Full splits. Bloody hell, he's... He saw me, he took one look at me and he said, nah. I don't want to mess with that today. I'm not messing with that. <laughs> <laughs> the battle stash. <laughs> do a little like, shot. Yeah? What are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to do a poser shot, you got a problem with it? <laughs> How's the colours on these guys? Talking to me at the camera. Mate. Here we go, time to teach you, uh, you lot, a few tricks um, about <laughs> camping in the snow for, uh, with all my experience. <laughs> There's a lot of snow on top of this ground. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to get back to ground? No, no, I don't want to get to the ground. Oh, right. um, I just want to get a bit of a semi, semi bunker situation going on. Oh, so You'll probably want, I'd imagine you'll probably want that a bit higher. Higher? Okay. Yeah. Tell me what to do now. <laughs> I'm on top. Higher. I'll send him higher. That's, that's an adjust. Blizzard proof. An emu proof. Just covered up the edges with a fair bit of snow. Stop any uh, drafts getting in there. Don't worry about this side. You still going, mate? <laughs> still, you still going over there? I was thinking about just camping under, under that rock. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing there, mate? You're right. Like not, not working out. Not working out over there. I need a bigger peg. Yeah. You got a kitty, kitty size kitty peg, peg over there. <laughs> 
<laughs> the real bushman never blames his peg. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's cool. Or my one. Better hurry up. You're uh, you're cooking, aren't you? Well, I think she's almost done. This looks superb. Here. Well, what's you got going on in here? Or yeah. ganya, as I like to call it. Bloody hell, impressive. We did it. We did it, boys and girls. We've bloody done it again. <laughs> Just pack the snow around like you did. Yeah. Just like I did, yeah. Is that because that was a really good idea? <laughs> So I've actually picked up this minus 10 sleeping bag from Neve Gear. So he's an Australian bloke here making sleeping bags here in Australia and he does a quilt as well. This is called the Bandicoot sleeping bag. Essentially it's got a zip that you can open up from the bottom or from the top. Sort of goes all the way down and then you've still got like a little foot compartment. So you can use it as a sleeping bag but you can also unzip it all the way down and then turn it upside down and then just use it like a quilt as well. If you go on the website uh, you can actually select all the different colours for all the different panels of the sleeping bag and you can make the interior a different colour, the collar as well. Uh, but me being me, I just went green on green on green. And um, yeah, it feels really nice. It, it's, it is really like an ultra lightweight material. It's probably not going to be quite as durable as some of my other like military style sleeping bags. But um, the quality is really good. Yeah, I'm just keen to test this one out. Taking all the precautions, <laughs> this being my first time sleeping out in the snow, so I've got um, the reactor thermal liner from Sea to Summit, so I'm going to chuck that inside the sleeping bag, and then I'm going to be laying on top of one of the Sea to Summit Comfort Plus SI sleeping mats. So this is a self-inflating one. Uh, it does rise up about 10 centimeters actually, so it doesn't leave you with a whole lot of room inside the bivy, but it's still enough that it's not sort of laying on your face. Just makes it a little more awkward getting in and out of. And this is rated at 4.1, so that's pretty damn good as well. And then I'll just chuck a little closed cell sleeping mat underneath the actual bivy. Couple thermals on tonight, you reckon, when you hop into bed or? Hey, with all the stuff you got, you're gonna be sweating. <laughs> Mate, I feel up. like you know what you're doing. Try to do a little without taking the lid off. <laughs> what do we got in here, boys and girls? In the silly swagman's little flask. It's cracking. It's about to get cracking with cracking. Am I right? Four shots worth. In goes the cola. Well, mate, I think this is probably worthy of a cheers, you I think it is. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, mate. What an absolute cracker of an arvo. Does not get better. Honestly, far out.
the sky out here just feels so bloody big and beautiful. How's that? That is. <laughs> as big tell and you what, the rest that. of that's going in there. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can't handle it. And sitting when we were driving up and it just looked horrible, the mountains. <laughs> it's blanketing fog and mist and rain. Yeah. And when we rocked up in the car park, it was raining. raining yeah. It was raining. And that was it, that's all we had. As soon as we started walking, just... Happy days. The gods looked upon us and look what we were ordered with. Should we get some flames going? I think we probably should. Can we do it with limited resources? Old shopping board. Yeah, I know, right? That's where it's at. Multi years. Oh, you on here, mate? I think we're on. That's right. Alright boys and girls, the team tonight is rocking a bit of campus pantry just to make it nice and easy. It's very dark and very cold. I've got the Moroccan pork tonight, so we'll see how this one goes. I think this is one of the only flavours I haven't tried now. Yeah, not, not bad apart from the fact that I put way too much water in oh this God. one. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, and it's couscous as well. Ah eh? uh, yeah, so it's just true, soggy just, <laughs> just soggy couscous. At least it actually tastes like pork. Being out here in the hills, the mountains forming an ancient backdrop, it's easy to feel a sense of place in time a respect for the natural world that holds you in its mercy and in its wonder. It makes you question everything. But there is one thought that is always reoccurring. Are we too far removed from these places that shaped us for thousands of years? I think of a city and I think of noise, stress, traffic, unrealistic tasks, the ticking over of the watch hands, fleeting visits with friends and family, grandparents removed to the far stretches of society, bright lights, drug and alcohol abuse. But when I think of the mountains, I think of hardship, lessons, beauty, life, death, balance, the sounds of birds, the sounds of water, tracks in the sand and in the snow, stars at night, the warmth of a campfire. So we got a little bit of snow last night, which is nice. I was just uh, telling Scotty, I thought we had a visitor last night, and I was basically uh, alleging that there was a deer here, and um, he asked if there was tracks, and I was like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for now, I'm not seeing any. And then I explained to him like how I heard, I heard it walk up to his tent, assume it's investigating it, and then it walked over to mine and was investigating. And then I heard his, him unzip something like a bivy or a sleeping bag or whatever. And when I said that he goes, it wasn't me getting up to go to the toilet was it? And I was like... I'm just the messenger bro. So yeah. Yep, it was just Scotty going to the loop, not a deer. Embarrassing.
I was walking down here because I saw a, a pole or something. There's a pole down here. I don't know. Oh, it's an animal camera. <laughs> it's an animal camera. Let's go take a look at this. Oh, let's not take a look at it. I think they're trying to find wild dogs because there's a uh, there's a dead deer laid out in front of it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, still want to put my face in the camera, but it's not really appropriate now, is it? With RIP laying in front of it. I won't sit there for cool shot because wet bum. I just lean. How's that? How's that look? My hand in pocket. Or two, two hands, two hands in pockets. Put up on log. You gotta get the right height log because it's too high. I'm trying too hard. That's right. That's right on the line, I reckon. Guess what? Scotty's out here ripping on my stuff again. <laughs> that. <laughs> that is how a shelter should be. <laughs> That is how you fly through the night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have gone with the roof tile. <laughs> the roof tile. <laughs> yep. Good slump. Good slump. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm being serious here. As you can see, my plan here was to work with nature. So I was capturing the downfall of snow in order to... Um, Trap that heat underneath. Yeah, trap the yeah. heat and uh, increase the strength of the shelter um, <laughs> from the on oncoming blizzards. And I'll tell you what, if those blizzards had come, they wouldn't have even known I was here. <laughs> Kids, do not take your shelter building advice from this one. <laughs> this is this is the difference between um, like a, a Prof legitimate... Professional uh, and uh, wouldn't. I mean, professional is a strong word. <laughs> Between a legitimate bloke who likes to camp and really cares about his structures and whatnot, and a guy who used to be in the infantry and got told to just lay down where he was. <laughs> and if he had a tarp, there was a good chance there was only one tree, so he'd just drape it over his body. <laughs> so, yeah, the standards. Yeah. Yeah. City boy, infantry boy. <laughs> All right, so I thought I'd quickly just do a bit of a breakdown on how everything went last night. I was, I was toasty warm, uh, sort of saying to Scotty, and he thought it was a bit funny, but I was right on the line of being too warm. I wasn't there yet, but I reckon if I had had another layer on, I would have been sweating. That which, is not a thing. That's, that's a thing, I promise. Thing <laughs> too warm. And yeah, like I had no idea what, I thought I was going to be freezing my ass off coming out here. So like, that's why I had just everything everything in the pack the pack was fully loaded that minus 10 sleeping bag by neve gear that was that was toasty and the way you can cinch it right up around the neck you can cinch it really nice and tight under the chin stopped any draft coming in which i think was the big savior out of that the bivy the bivy shelter i actually had the back screen down with just the mozzie net there you know i thought i'd give that a whirl just because of condensation but I, I figured i'd have to close it up sometime because it'd be too cold but it actually ended up being quite a nice bit of cold air because <laughs> sorry <laughs> mate but i was overheating in there so <laughs> um and yeah the the liner yeah good to go you can definitely recommend them i would have been crazy i think coming out here without some of this stuff i had two sets of socks on which definitely helps keep you warm and then i had one set of thermals. I actually kept this woolen jumper on and then I had a beanie on. I reckon if the snow had been any heavier though, it could have been a whole different kettle of fish, <laughs> boys and girls. <laughs> oh. 
Still the lad. I think she's getting there. In the battle. Not a bad little scene, is it? Make sure this fire is well underway, and then we'll get a get a coffee brew and get some um, get some brekkie going. Bit of bacon this morning. <laughs> this uh, boy ran so Push, low, push. <laughs> this is uh, just in case that emu decides to come around again. <laughs> Roasting. We're gonna bushcraft up a little bacon rack. Oh yeah. I couldn't be bothered at all, <laughs> but but it looks good on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever done this before, mate? I have not. Watch, watch and learn. What's, have you done it? No. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it just looks like it's going to take like ages for it to cook. Do I look like I've done this before? <laughs> <laughs> That's on fire. <laughs> Hear the sizzle of success. <laughs> hey, if that's your success, I'd hate to see you fail. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never see it. <laughs> hey, people have a go at me for burning my food. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> He's just about ready now, another couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. Cut that bit off, they're good. Yeah. Bit of sourdough. Is you actually bring sourdough? No. What? What's, is that sourdough? Yep. All right. White, white, white sourdough. Yeah, I've got sourdough yeah. too, but mine's... What is yours? Yeah, fancy. I've got some goat cheese in here. If you want your A-grade outdoor adventure videos, <laughs> hit up Scotty. If you want your B-grade <laughs> outdoor videos, you come to the right place. You've been inspired, are you? You're going to do it that way? <laughs> Master Chef Australia, here I come. You don't want to come over and watch and learn? Keep it down, mate. The master's at work. What do you reckon? Bush bacon banger. Look at that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what are you looking at? This is the epitome of a uh, Yossie Bushman. <laughs> Come here, mate. Uh, got a bit of washing up to do there, don't you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I feel sorry for you, that's a lot of work there. <laughs> Damn. I'm gonna see how you really cook bacon, mate. Look at that. Crispy goodness. Dog's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all know what time it is over here. Ding dong. Cheers. How's that for a spot? What would you rate this place out of 10? 30? Yep. 30. Minimum. All right, guys. Well, it's nearly 11 o'clock now. We've had a bit of a slow morning. Um, not that either of us are complaining. So we're going to start packing up now. We're a little undecided whether we're going to uh, stay for a second night, which we sort of had penciled in, only because, like, yesterday and this morning, we got so lucky with the conditions and the weather, and we already did so much filming that we're sort of happy and content that if we were to turn back now, um, it would have been a great, great trip. So what we think is we're going to continue up and cross over to the other side of this little valley here and uh, go up the top of this hill and check that out and slowly sort of make our way back down in the direction of the car. And, you know, if we happen across an area that we're just like, look at this view, we have to camp here, then, you know, we'll just stay and, uh, and enjoy the night again. But if not, it's been a bloody awesome trip so far. So yeah, we'll pack up and um, yeah, let's play it by ear.
Isn't that right, Scotty? Very good. Very good. Chocolate croissant for the ride. And we're off five years later. So right now we're trying to find a way across the river. And I was just saying to Scotty, it's funny how the river's, you know, only like a meter wide, but it's got such severe consequences for you if you get it wrong. So taking our time here and just see what happens. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> shit, man. Oh no! Oh, that was the worst. It just spun as soon as it like left my arm. <laughs> oh man, I would have felt so that. terrible. <laughs> that, that was more successful. All right, the last and most valuable part of this uh, camp setup. Don't you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Too easy. I feel cool, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We're real men of the mountains now. We're almost to the top of Everest. Yeah. Some people offer no snowshoes to the top of Everest, but we thought, you know, some people don't make it to the top of this thing. As you can see, we've got a bit of, bit of weather there rolling in, which was forecast. It's still meant to be light winds, but a bit of a thunderstorm. So, yeah, we've had a bit of a hike up and around and most likely just gonna call it and hike out of here. So yeah, we'll just continue on and, and I'll speak to you in a little bit. Well, there you go. As forecast, the weather has started to roll in. It's sort of raining slash snowing at the moment. So, gonna do a little sign off now. Um, just wanna thank Scotty for yeah, right. introducing me to some snow. Um, <laughs> it was a bloody wild time actually. It was a lot of fun and so scenic. Yeah, just, even though we didn't have as much snow as we kind of, we thought this was gonna be all covered in snow. Yeah. But even still, we just find those nice little pockets and those hills where it's yeah, still covered. It's That's really nice. it absolutely nothing to complain about that's for sure thanks for watching guys um hopefully it was you know entertaining and something nice to look at from uh the comfort of your couch <laughs> and um yep we'll we'll see you on the next one and uh hopefully we may get back to the car before the weather really starts to blitz us all right cheers guys all right catch you later Hooray. but one day idol is like torture for me yet i